Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down with green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for bringing us together, Heavenly Father, in order to fellowship with one another and to worship and praise your name. We ask blessings on everyone that's in attendance, Heavenly Father. But we remember those who cannot join us today, those who may be sick and shut in, those who may be incarcerated, for whatever reason, Heavenly Father, we ask blessings on them and that we remember them in prayer. We thank you again, Heavenly Father. And we know that we can call upon you for anything, giving us a hope for another day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen.
reading is coming from uh, page 581, the Missionary Church, page 581. It's taken from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, John chapter 17, verses 18 through 21, and Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. As thou, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Now there were in the church, church that was in Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and many, to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when, and when they had fasted and prayed and, and laid their hands on them, they, they sent, sent them away. away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And, and when they were in they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their ministry. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It's now prayer time in Martha Davis. I will start by reading out the names on our prayer list and then after that, if you have others that you would like to call out, please do so. Sister Christine Jennings, Sister Ola May Pardon, Sister Deacon and Sister David Boyd, Brother Paul Russell, Sister Dorothy Brown, Brother Michael Brown, Sister Gladys Baker, Sister Renee Hauser, Sister Denise Humphrey, Sister Mary Edith Elliott, Sister Arlene Peck, Sister Rita Allen, Sister Sue Morgan, Brother Rodney Whetstone, Sister Virginia Durham, Brother Josh Jennings, Brother John Williams, Brother Carl Hodge, Sister B. Wilkerson, Brother Darren Henry, Brother Carl Mills, Sister Frances Thompson, Brother Ron Larryu, Sister Nina Donaldson, Sister Tawana Carter, Brother Stephen Brown, Brother Curtis Lowe, Brother David Ayers, the Stitt family, Sister Geneva Cole, Sister Danielle Wright, the Bidiaco family, Sister Andrea Brown and family, Brother Finley Hickman, Sister Almeida Simmons, Sister Fran O'Connor, Sister Sharon Bryant, Brother John Ridgeway, Brother William Armstrong, Brother Charles Kyle, Sister Carmen Smith, Sister Jasmine Burton, Brother Devon Burton, Brother Andrew Smith, Brother Mark Cox, Sister Nancy Wilson, Sister Jennifer Peebles, all those we are duly bound to pray for, the leaders of our nation, our local state officials, all military personnel, um, Lana Brown, and um, the victims of the floods in Kentucky. Are there any others? The Henry and Dixon family. The Johnson and Brown family. Earl Bradson. Species of fear. Ola May is in Fort Sanders Hospital. Mm -hmm. He's in Eastern and Elisa and my neighbors across the street all have COVID. Mm -hmm. My family. Bobby Davis family. 
the others? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you first and foremost, giving you all glory, glory, honor, and praise. Father God, because we praise you because of who you are, not just because you've been so good to us, but because you are our Lord and Savior. Yes, and we give yes. you glory and honor for that. But Father God, we cannot come and not say thank you because you have been so good to us. So good. Father God, we know that our prayer list gets longer and longer, but we know that that means that people know that they can call on us to call on you to, to help heal them, Father God. And we ask that you just touch each and every family that is represented here. We ask that you touch each and every person that's on our list. We ask that you touch their families, Father, because we know that those that are caring for sick, they get tired too, Father. And we ask that you just give them strength and that you prop them up on every leaning side. Yes. Father God, we know that there are so many things going on. There's wars and there's rumors of wars. There's blood, there's famine, there's death, and there's sickness. Yes. But Father God, we know that you are still in control. Father, you are still on the throne, and we know that there is nothing that goes on that you cannot take care of. Father, help us to remember that. Help us to come to you, no matter how big or how small we think it is, Father God. You ask that you, we bring it to you. We ask that you just help us to remember that you are always on our side. No matter what's going on, Father, you're always on our side. Help us to reach out and, and pray for those that need those prayers. Help us to be a light in a dark world. Help your light to shine through us. Help us to bring others to you. We know that it is not our place to, for what people believe, but we can preach your word so that they may come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Be with us as we go throughout this service. Be with us as we leave this place. Bless the one that is going to bring the message. Help us open our hearts and our yes, minds yes, so that we yes. may receive what it is that you have for us. And help us to fill up with that and take it out into this world yes. and make witnesses for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Philadelphia, Mississippi will be here the, the week of September the 11th. Well, the 11th is on a Sunday. That's when they will arrive. But I'll give uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll have more on how many days they're going to be here. And normally it's three or four. And so I guess we'll probably have to, once we get that information, probably by next week, we'll have to sit down and figure out what we're going to do and who's going to be involved which I hope that every, everyone in the church will, will be involved in this. Thanks. Michelle, we have the people in our church who have family in Harlem, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So in the next week, we will be talking to our church about things that we can do. We know they're going to need, I have my friend to look it up, they're going to need cleaning supplies and water. Mm -hmm. So we just need to decide if we're going to do a monetary donation or are we going to use this church as a drop-off point for uh, Harlan, and if we do, then we'll need to put it on the radio, we'll have someone stationed here in case people bring stuff, and then uh, the members of our church who know of family who have churches there, we can easily get that stuff to them. Okay. So we will be talking about that next Sunday, about what we're going to do, because we don't want to wait too long. Those people need help right now. Yes. And so we need to be thinking about it. Like I said, we know we're going to have to have cleaning supplies, blood. <laughs> So we will be talking to you about that next Sunday. Amen. Also, don't forget, uh, Morristown Task Force on Diversity is having an August 8th celebration on the 7th, next Sunday, from 4 to 7 at Fred Miller Park. So you bring the kids out. They can play in the splash uh, pad. We will be under the big pavilion. We will have games. We will have free food. So um, please bring your families out and come and help us celebrate um, um, that Emancipation Day for Tennessee. And please don't forget, school is starting back. Please, please stay with these children. Encourage them about making those grades. Amen. <clears throat>
be taking scripture reading, excuse me. We'll be taking from the second epistle of John, first chapter, verses one through seven. Those who are able to stand, please stand. If you cannot, God knows. When you read and you have found it, say me. <coughs> To the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all those who have known the truth, because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever, grace, mercy, and peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth as we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you shall walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. I have read uh, from the second epistle of John, first, uh, chapter verses 1 through 7, and the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Amen.
And if I thought about missionaries in the Bible, somebody show me because I tried to find it and I did not see the word missionary, disciples. Let's get back to Paul. Saul was his name in the beginning and he was a bad person. He was not a good person at all. Paul, who went by the name of Saul at that time, was on his way to Damascus with a letter from the high priest of the temple in Jerusalem. And that letter gave him the authority to arrest and torture anybody who belonged to the way. And the way was what the Jewish, early Jewish Christians referred to themselves as the way, meaning those who followed Christ. So intent was Saul on opposing anybody connected to the Jesus of Nazareth. He was mad all the time. He made threats and he committed murder against the disciples of the Lord. He was a man who truly hated Christ and all who associated with Christ. Mm -hmm. Suddenly while on that road, he and his followers, and you know, bad people always got somebody behind them. Good people have some, but bad people always have people behind them. Uh, while they were on the road to Damascus, they fell down. This light, this bright light came and caused all of them to fall down. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus spoke to Saul, and Saul was really the only one who could hear his voice. Saul recognized this as being a holy being, and he said, who are you? When, Saul identi when Jesus identified himself as the one Saul was, had been persecuting, yes. can you imagine how scared he got? I mean, he probably thought he was going to kill him, okay? And I'm sure he probably couldn't talk very much, but he finally got out and he said, who are you? The scripture indicates that Saul asked Jesus what he wanted him to do. Uh -huh. The scripture says that Jesus told him to rise and go to Damascus. And there he would be told what to do. Oh, yes. Right then and there, Saul, who is now Paul, was commissioned by God. Yes. We are missionaries. We are also commissioned by God to oh, go yes. out and do his bidding. Yes. When God truly touches our hearts, our only response should be, Lord, may your will be done, and how may you use me? Oh, yes. This account of Paul's transition shows us that he can use the least of us, he can use the worst of us. Oh, yes. Each one of us who are trying to do him harm, he can turn us around. Yes. If we will only open up our hearts and listen to him. Oh, he yes. can make us better people. Each member of the church who has received God in his or her heart as his Lord and Savior is a missionary. You know, a lot of people think of missionaries, especially here, just women. There have been some men missionaries in the Bethel districts. Yes. I have been in meetings when they're there. But there are men and women missionaries. I think probably Mr. Camp maybe came to our meeting son, if I can remember. Mr. Camp um, mm -hmm. was a male missionary here at Martha Day's Baptist Church. We should be missionaries even if we are not formally called and set apart as Paul was. Mm -hmm. We are responsible to teach the gospel by word and deed to all God's children. And we must remember, we are also God's children. Oh, yes. Missionary work is necessary in order to give the people of the world an opportunity to hear and accept the gospel. People need to learn the truth, turn to God, and receive forgiveness from their sins. Yes. God gave us several commandments. But I looked at two of the commandments that mm -hmm. he gave us. Probably the first two. Matthew 27, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. The King James Version reads, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Oh, yes, it is. And the second is, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I took the second one and split it just a little bit. You should love your neighbor. You should love yourself. Oh, yes. We must love ourselves. If we do not love ourselves, how can we be of any help to others? All right. If we go around complaining, being grouchy, irritable, bad-tempered, how can we show people God's love? Okay. How can we demonstrate the love that God has in us. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we are mad all the time, how can we benefit or show God's love to other people? Go ahead now. So many of us 
here at Martha Davis have had people to seek out us for help, for comfort, by way of prayer. Well. So they must see the love of God in this church and in its members. They must, because constantly someone in this church is being approached for prayer. Well. Mm -hmm. God gave us several other directives of missionaries, <coughs> disciples, talking about men and women. Matthew 28, 19, 19 through 20 said, mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. He also gave us other directives as missionaries. Those people who are believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the English Standard Version, 1 Peter says, 4.10, As each has received a gift, use it to serve others yes. as good stewards of God's grace. That means cooking, cleaning, singing, driving, uh, whatever you can do. If God has given us a talent and we hide it, don't use it, put it in a hole, we might as well put it in a hole covered it up because it won't grow if we don't use it. That's right. He that's gave right. us talents to use and everyone in Martha Davis has a talent. Yes. We have a lot of talented humans, humans that walk through this door at Martha Davis Baptist Church. Yes, we yes. need to use those talents to help others. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Mm -hmm. When you help other people, you're not doing it for yourself. That's right. You're doing it for the Lord. Yeah. Ephesians 5, 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Well, I had to do some research on that to see exactly, expand on it just a little bit. Being an imitator of God means we must imitate his love. After all, the Bible tells us God is love. Yes, he is. His very nature is defined by his love. Everything he does, he does out of love. As children of God, we're to imitate and walk in that love. We're to yes. show people love. Show them love. And there are many, many ways to show people love. Oh, yes, it is. 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in us? All right. God's Spirit dwells in us. So when we do something to ourselves, we're mm -hmm. doing it to God. Mm -hmm. yes. Drugs. Those people take drugs. Too much alcohol. Because he didn't say not to drink. He said, you know, don't over, overextend yourself in the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> My advice, too much food. Yeah. Too much food. Yeah. Oh, we must take care of our temples. That also means taking prescribed medication. God placed Dr. Cheryl on this earth for a reason. That was to help and take care of us and to take care of us. If a doctor prescribes you medicine and you decide, oh, I'm not taking it today or I'm taking it every other day, whatever, that's not doing God's bidding because he wants us to take care of ourselves yes, or he yes. would not place medicine and doctors on this earth. Yes, right, that's right. These directives or orders or commands are for men, women, Boys and girls. Oh, yes. Also. Oh, yes. This brings me to women disciples. And you know, there's many, many thoughts about women disciples, women ministers. You know, some churches, they don't even allow a woman up on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But God used women in many, many ways. Yes, he does. Who was the first woman, woman missionary in the Bible? She was also known as the apostle to the apostles. Mm -hmm. It was Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. She was the one who was sent to proclaim the resurrection resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ oh, yes. to his disciples. There are others that are just not mentioned in the Bible, very little at all, but women serve the Lord uh, and his disciples quite often. Yeah. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Certain women minister to Christ, and this verse is talk about them. Mm -hmm. Only three of them, but they talk about them. And it says, Now it came to pass afterward, that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, for one, who you know went to tell his disciples that he had risen. Yes. She had seven demons in her, and they were gone. 
Joanna, the wife of the manager of Herod's household, she had also been healed. And she is not mentioned often, but she was one of those first two people, one of those women who were at the tomb to discover that Jesus was not in that tomb. Mm -hmm. And then Susanna, whose parents were also righteous and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses. Many other women provided help to Jesus and his followers. Oh, yes. These women provided resources out of their own pockets or out of their own households to provide support to Jesus and his uh, followers yes. while he was doing his earthly ministry. Yes. Women are important to society. Women are important to churches. Women are important to the world. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we're what makes the world go round, but that's just me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I want to read you something I found, and I didn't cite it. I was so busy researching and trying to get something done, I forgot where it came from. But these are not my words. It's from somebody else. It is ironic that the low status of women in that day that Jesus chose to appear to Mary and the other women, and that the first Christian preachers of the resurrection were not men, but women. Jesus did not first appear to his beloved disciples. He, he appeared to Mary and the women who followed him and served him. Mary saw him first. She was the first to proclaim the good news or gospel of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. He is risen. Jesus could have easily appeared to Peter and the beloved disciples, the disciples who were behind him, behind locked doors. Yes. The fact that he appeared to Mary first, some say it only means that this was by divine appointment and was a deliberate part of his act, oh, or yes. a deliberate act on his part. Women, as well as men, were witnesses to the gospel and were commissioned to preach it to all with whom they came into contact. And the women were and are still faithful in proclaiming the gospel, even to other disciples of today and to the world. Mm -hmm. A question I have, what can you do as a missionary, as a disciple, to help your church or your community? I have a few simple suggestions for you and for myself. And they're very simple, easy things to do. Visit a nursing home. You don't have to be visiting a particular person. You could just take some flowers or something there. There's always someone in the hallway there. You could talk to them, ask them how they're doing, who they are. You can pray with them. Call those who are sick at home. The people who are sick at home, they are so excited to hear from you when yes, you call yes. to check on them. We don't want them to think that they're forgotten. And they don't necessarily have to be from Martha Davis. They could be anybody that you know that is homesick. Oh, We'd yes. love to hear from you. Oh, yes. Also, check with someone who's been absent for a while. It mm -hmm. may be a reason that they're absent. Yes. So, you know, these are just three simple things that we all can do, including ourselves. We all have much work to do in the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Last, I'm going to read to you a few lyrics from one of my favorite songs by Michael Jackson. And you've heard me talk about it before. Man in the Mirror. Go ahead, now go ahead. I'm going to make a change for once in my life. I'm going to feel real good. Going to make a difference. Going to make it right. As I turn up the collar on my winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street with nothing to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? A summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, yes. and the man's soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, because they got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. That's why I want you to know, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Yes. I'm going to change my ways. Yes. No message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, yes. take a look at yourself and then make a change. Yes. I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize there are some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Because yes. it could be really me pretending that they're not alone. A weeping, deep, a willow deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart. A washed out dream, yes. they follow the pattern of the wind, you see, because they got no place to be. That's why I'm starting with me, the man in the mirror. Yes. I'm going to make a change. 
I'm going to try my best. We should all try to make a change. It's something simple. It doesn't have to be hard. No. He didn't say go build somebody a house. Yeah. He didn't say, you know, uh, buy a car. He said make a difference. Make a it could be huh? very simple. I'm asking each one of us to try to make a difference in somebody's life. Yes. Do something to help somebody. Anybody but ourselves. Yes. We all, we all have work to do. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Reverend Young if he will come up and uh, give us the invitation to Christian discipleship. Let us stand. Maybe someone here would like to come by letter of Christian experience or by baptism. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door now. If any man would open the door, he said, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. As our choir sing our song, let us hear it. Somebody hear it. That the Jesus, the Bible said, the Alusia said, that don't put off for tomorrow for what we can do today. Tomorrow is not promised. If God has opened your eyes this morning, He allowed you that chance and opportunity to make it right with Him. It may seem impossible with you, but all things are possible with God. Won't you come? Won't you come? You know just what you need. God is waiting and He's willing to give you the desires of your heart. But it takes you, my brother and sister, to come and step out of faith and believe that whatever you need, God got it. But you know.
will make a difference in your life and what you're thinking. If I said something that you did not agree with, please say something to me about it. All I wanted to do was try to make us look at ourselves in the mirror. That's the most important thing. Oh, yes. You got to like and you got to love yourself or you can't do anything. You can't accomplish much at all. You've got to like yourself. Amen. We will ask Reverend Young to do our benediction. Let me stand, please. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank, thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for this place called Martha Davis. We ask that you continue to live every day life that shine upon the hill, that people can see the good works we're going to find you, Father, which is in heaven. We thank you for our very own sister who did a magnificent job. We pray that you continue to order continue to guide and continue to give her the understanding. She may continue to tell the good news about what you have done. Father, we pray that you just continue to bless us. We pray that you, as we leave this place, where that you will give us travel and grace, that when we get home, that we find everything pleasing in your sight. We ask that you will be the pilot, not the co-pilot. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest ruled by our hands for now and forevermore. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray and for you say, let us all sing together. Amen. 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 And God bless you.